Okay, everybody. Um, I'm going to start changing out this yard, and I'm just going to try and document a little bit at a time of what I'm doing. And so the the photographs will be a little bit of something, then a little bit of something else, and I hope it all comes together good. But at least you'll be able to see what I'm up to. Let's get started. Okay, I'm starting by uh, just removing the ballast in between the rails here, and I'm. Uh, since it's all glued down and tinted and everything, I've got to kind of be careful not to destroy this. Try to reuse the track, not destroy the track. So let's see how it goes here. I'm using a small pair of scissors uh, to do this with, snips as they call them in the telephone industry. But um, as you can see, it's coming loose pretty easily. Not exactly sure what to do here to keep the uh, ballast from going down in the turnouts uh, yet. I think I'm going to have to do this this one here too. Apparently, I should move my train out of the way. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go again. Some places seem to be a little more tightly glued than others. Okay, this is going to be awful noisy. Let's try and vacuum this up. I got to go find the vacuum. Okay, I'm back with the vacuum, but uh, before I get started, I went inside and I found the model railroader's helper. They're called goldfish. Um, I like to eat them while I'm making stuff. Just a tip. Let me get the vacuum going here. Okay, now we're going to see if we can get some of this track up and uh, for reuse. 
Okay, I'm using this uh, sheath knife, it's called. Uh, telephone guys call it a sheath knife. Anyway, this is what I'm using. You could use a putty knife or anything to start prying up, gently prying up the track. And you'll be able to see once I start getting some of this track up that I have some shims under it to uh, uh, level it up initially. Another thing you want to be careful of is I have, I have uh, Pico track pins holding this down. And you can see them sticking through here. And uh, it's wise to take an extra couple of seconds and go through here and uh, if this is what you're using and pull them out. Uh, because uh, they don't do your fingers any good. I'm also going to disassemble the pieces here as I go. I'll probably wind up putting all new rail joiners in this because uh, I don't trust the... Uh, rail joiners once they've been painted and glued once. Um, so that's another story. At this point I've gotten one whole section down to the turnouts out and the rest of it will all be repetition so I think I'll let you guys off the hook and go until I get some more progress done here. Okay, I've gotten the track up. Um, now I've got to take the turnouts out here. Probably have to take out these uh, caboose tracks because the distance won't wind up being correct. I don't think. I might leave them and then try it first. But I've got all the track out of the yard area here and I did wind up taking uh, some regular masking tape and taping up the holes so that I don't get um, ballast down inside these turnouts in case I can fix them and decide to do something else with them another day. Um, it just seems a shame to throw them away. But um, anyways, that's where I'm at right now. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, um, I've got all the turnouts out here. Um, I've got all the track out, as you can see. And what I'm down to is cleaning off that ballast that's in between and all these shims and spacers, which I'll probably have to go back in and redo to level the track up for the yard. But you can see I'm pretty much down to the bare bones where I need to take off from. So uh, I'm going to use this guy to do the scraping with, and uh, I'll show you the results when I get done. Okay, gang. Um, you can see there by the McDonald's, uh, next to the uh, man standing on the right-hand side of the Volkswagen there, there's a black spot there. Uh, that brings me to uh, something that I should have paid attention, attention to and didn't. That is, when you have your shop back out here and you're cleaning up stuff, don't get too close to your loose automobiles and people. I sucked a car up from there. Uh, so let that be a lesson. Um, I'm going to be moving on okay. here. It's starting to look like this might be a become a comedy. Uh, here's the little guy I sucked up. Unfortunately, I tore the shop back apart, cut the bag all apart, searched for him in the dust mess for about 15 minutes to find out that he didn't make it all the way into the shop back. He was stuck in the hose. Um, let that be another lesson. Let's move on. Well, it's a good thing I'm editing this because you would have heard a bunch of cuss words. I just sucked up my second vehicle after I told you to be careful and not suck up vehicles uh, with the uh, shop back. I got a little bit too close to where I had set them thought, ah, just pick up this last little piece of ballast here and boop, and it went. Fortunately, there was only about an ounce of stuff in the bag, so I was able to dump it out and get them out of there. But again, lessons learned. I've got all the... Uh, basically all the ballast cleaned off as much as I need to do. Uh, I'm going to start trying to put the turnouts in place and see how it's going to look. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. Alright everybody, um, I did some test fitting of uh, turnouts here and you'll see that I was able to fit in the three number sixes. Uh, the only thing that required a major modification was modifying this number six turnout to fit the distance 
that the two caboose tracks were apart uh, with a number four turnout. And to do that, I'm going to try and zoom in here a little bit, but you might be able to see it on this, but I cut the end of this turnout severely and shortened it up uh, by cutting through the uh, ballast and uh, moving the, uh, restraining the, the uh, coupler or the um, joiner restraining plate inward. And then when you come down here, you can see right here that I have cut this track way back towards the frog compared to the diverging track on the right-hand side there to accommodate this curve piece to go in and fit into that caboose track. And then I had to cheat and use a few small one-inch pieces to fit. Now, I may go back in there and just make one single piece of the proper length uh, when I go put this in permanently. But you can see that it uh, there's a little bit of crook to it, but I did get it to fit. And if you come back here, you can see that everything does fit in there. So um, what I'm trying to point out here, and you can see here how I, sh how I shortened up that the end of that turnout. Um, and here, you can see how I shortened up the uh, straight through lead back considerably from the one nearest us. Uh, and then once I did that and got it all cut to accept the uh, curve piece, which let me swing around here, I had to cut the road bed for the curve piece to fit in there. And um, once I got that done, uh, the end of the turnout, the piece that I moved back was super glued to the turnout. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much all I got done today, but you can see that uh, we're on our way to having at least a three-track yard using all number six turnouts here, and was able to adapt to the two uh, caboose tracks where it was a number four turnout. Uh, I I'm going to give you a, a brief view of something that I made, and I may do a video on it uh, after a while, but I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse real fast. Okay, here's what I was talking about. Uh, you'll notice that there's double track on both ends of this uh, single crossover. And I know that you guys know that when you put two number six turnouts together in a single configuration like this, the track spacing does not come out correctly to attach to double track. So what I had to do was, and I don't know how close I can get here, I had to cut both of those diverging tracks back as I did on the one in the yard that I just got done showing you so that they would get close enough to make the double track spacing. Uh, you can see that everything is not really hunky-dory there, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, what I had to do is solder the joint in the center and then you can see on the left-hand side of the third track up that I had to cut a gap in there. And then you'll see on the fourth track uh, over, I had to cut a gap in there opposite of each other or kind of catacornered each other. And then solder the rail joiner in the middle. This prevents all the, all the rail from shifting once you put the, the, uh, the turnout together, the two turnouts together. Let me flip it over and show you the back. This gives you an idea of pretty much where I did the cutting and how I angled it. Um, I'll try and get over here on the other side. I'm on the wrong side of the camera, but you'll get the idea. It's not a it's not an overwhelming uh, task to make a single crossover, but with a real good performing double crossover, I just wanted to be able to see if I could do it, and obviously you can do it. And let me flip it back over here so you can see it one more time. And obviously you could do this left or right-handed. Anyway, I'm going to end this one uh, for now. And I'll give you another installation when I get some track in and down and let you see what the rest of the uh, yard conversion looks like. Mm -hmm.